My name is Dee Furlaw, and I'm the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent with DARE and Terrell County Centers of the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. One of the favorite things that I do on my job is to work with local foods, particularly when it comes to home food preservation. So today we're going to make a simple strawberry freezer jam. So often we use the word jam interchangeably with other words such as jellies or preserves. And although they're basically made with the same recipe, they're actually different products. So for example, the jam that we'll be making today is made from crushed fruits. That's gonna make a nice sturdy product, but it's not gonna be as firm as jelly. Jellies are made from the juice of fruits and berries and Preserves are going to be made from whole or chunks of fruit. There's also other kinds of sweet spreads as well, such as marmalades and conserves and butters. But today we're going to focus on the freezer jam. Most jams and jellies and other sweet spreads are made using the hot water bath processing. However, today what we're going to be making is just going to be used in the freezer. That means that it's not going to be stable to put up on your countertop and keep for an extended period of time. You're gonna to need to keep this in the refrigerator or in the freezer. The first ingredient in the recipe calls for strawberries, calls for one quart of strawberries. This is what we usually consider to be a quart of strawberries, and it is, but just remember that quart is a measure of volume. So you may want to make sure that you get some extra strawberries just in case the volume is not as heavy or in case you look in there and you get a mushy strawberry. You want to have enough to make sure that you have enough to make your product with. So what we're doing right now is we are cutting up, we're capping and lightly cutting up the strawberries. I've already washed the strawberries in advance and the capping process is just to make sure that you get the green leaves off the top because we definitely don't want to include those. So we'll just gently cut those off. We'll cut up the strawberry a little bit. This is gonna help a lot when it comes to mashing in just a few minutes. So let's mash this up a little bit. What we're looking for in the recipe is a cup and three quarters. Now I'll tell you, this is not a hard recipe to make. You're looking at the hardest part right now, which is mashing the strawberries. And we said earlier that jams are made out of crushed fruit. So this is kind of gonna sort of be up to you as to how crushed you want them to be. You can leave some little chunks in there if you want to, or you can mash them up a little bit finer if that's the way you like your jam to be. So let's give this just a little bit more mash. All right, that's looking pretty good. So let's measure it out now and see what we have. So we're gonna get down here and look. And this is actually just a little bit more. So we'll take just a little dab of it out. Okay. Now we're gonna put it back in the bowl. And we're gonna add the sugar. Now don't be real surprised with how much sugar we add. This recipe calls for four cups of sugar. And I know that's an awful lot of sugar to add to one little recipe. However, if you've done much in the way of home food preservation since COVID hit, you've probably noticed that there's been quite a bit of shortage of canning supplies. When you go look, what used to be a big spot that had lots of canning jars and pectins and preservatives and what have you, there's just not that much there anymore. And when you do do food preservation, you really need to go by what the recipe says. So today we're gonna to be using a liquid pectin and that is how much sugar this particular recipe calls for. We need to be sure that we use that amount so that the gelling process will happen accordingly. 
Now don't get discouraged if you say, I don't really want to add this much sugar on a regular basis. There are other pectin products that are available that use much less sugar and some that are even diabetic friendly. So let's stir this up a little bit. And I know that's a lot of sugar in there. Everybody's gonna be extra sweet when they try this. What we're doing is we're trying to get the sugar and the fruit mixed up nicely so that um, it can macerate. That means that it's gonna start forming a juice, a sugary, strawberry, sweet juice that's gonna help this form into our jam here in just a little bit. All right. We're just about there. Okay, the next step is gonna to be to let this sit for 10 minutes. So while we're waiting, let's mix up what comes next. This is gonna be two tablespoons of lemon juice. And we're gonna put in the entire bag of the liquid pectin. The pectin is what's gonna form this. It's gonna make it, um, give it that gel consistency. Otherwise, you're just gonna have something that's gonna be juicy that you would think you'd probably put on cakes or straw or um, ice cream or something like that. So let's stir this up. Okay, now I've got my eye on the time and we're gonna give this 10 minutes before we move on to the next step. All right, our 10 minutes are up, and so now we're gonna add the lemon juice and the pectin. Okay, so far so good. Now what we're gonna do is stir this for three minutes. That way it's going to incorporate really well in with the strawberries and the sugar, and it's gonna help that gel to get ready to form. Now this particular recipe calls for you to let this sit out at room temperature for up to 24 hours. This is so that the gel can form. So when you make this, don't immediately put it in the refrigerator or the freezer because that's gonna keep the gel from forming. So you can let it sit out for up to 24 hours. I would suggest that you keep an eye on it so when you see that it's starting to gel, you can go ahead and place it in the freezer, you can place it in the refrigerator, wherever it is that you want to keep it. Now, if you put it in the refrigerator, your very best taste and the look of the, the product is gonna be the very best in the first week. However, you can keep it in the refrigerator up to three weeks. If you store it in the freezer, you can keep it in the freezer for up to a year. This is gonna preserve the color, it's gonna preserve the flavor, and you're gonna be able to use it throughout the year. Now, when you take it out of the freezer and you're ready to put it in the fridge, um, let it thaw out in the refrigerator, use it, and then be sure and put it back in the refrigerator. Because if you don't, this is gonna grow molds and spores it's gonna go bad a lot quicker than your regular canned um, jams and jellies. So be sure you keep it back in the refrigerator. Also, these type, the freezer and refrigerator jams, are gonna separate easier. That means that you're gonna be able to see the fruit and you're gonna be able to see the liquid. So if you look at it and it doesn't appear to be moldy, um, it doesn't look bad, all you have to do is stir it back up and it'll reincorporate, and then you can keep it right back in the refrigerator. I wanted to share with you where I got this recipe. This recipe comes out of so easy to preserve. Look how nice and thick this book is. It comes out of the Cooperative Extension um, of Georgia, and it is an excellent resource for anybody who wants to learn how to hot water bath can, who wants to learn how to pressure can, freeze, dehydrate, 
it has not only the recipes in here, but it tells you how to do this safely. That's what we do in Cooperative Extension. We share research-based information from our universities because we want to make sure that food safety is a high priority for you as well so that you can keep you and your family safe with the foods that you so lovingly put up every year. So this is a great resource, and I want to share another one with you as well. This is the Ball Blue Book. You can find these lots of places at hardware stores and other big box stores. So this one is not quite as thick, doesn't have quite as much information, but it does have a lot of easy to read step-by-step -step instructions for safely preparing lots and lots of different kinds of foods. All right, so I think we're about ready that we can put a little bit of this in a jar now. You can use something that's a glass jar like this, or you can even use something that's plastic, um, something that's going to be freezer and refrigerator safe. We want to make sure when we get through that we leave about a half an inch of head space. That means space up at the top that's not already being used, um, that's not being taken up by the jam or the jelly. This is gonna give your jam and jelly opportunity to expand within the, the jar or the container that you use. So that's basically it, unless you want to add a nice little sticker to it. This way you're gonna remember what you have in your jar and when it was preserved. So if you have any kind of questions about home food preservation, give us a call at the Dare County Cooperative Extension Service. That's 252-473-4290. We would love to help you answer your questions and make sure that what you're preserving is put up safely. So I appreciate you sharing a little bit of your day with me and until next time, have a good one.